In football, most people are expendable and replaceable just like in real life. However, there are some special cases where the void these people leave is never filled and the club struggle to reach the same level again. In this video, we'll be going through 10 football personalities that to this day are yet to be replaced. In some cases, decades have passed without an adequate replacement, while in other cases, their departure left the club and even the league in ruins. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Starting out at number 10 with Jurgen Klopp at Borussia Dortmund. Throughout the years, Dortmund has proven that no player is really unreplaceable. Lewandowski reached an incredible level with a black and yellow outfit, but in just a decade, the club effectively replaced that striker position two times. First with Aubameyang, then with Haaland. The same thing happened in many other positions, except the manager. Jurgen Klopp not only gifted Borussia their last two Bundesliga titles, but also created one of the most feared squads in Europe, and ever since he left, that never truly happened again. BVB came close to winning the title only a few times in the last 10 years, and they haven't even had any stellar campaigns in Europe. It just goes to show that Klopp really was the glue that held everything together. Number 9. Mikhail Balak at Leverkusen Although this man is one of the most unlucky footballers to ever grace a football pitch, his talents are undeniable. And in 2002, Balak inspired Leverkusen to a potential treble winning season. That's something massive considering they were the underdogs in every front. By now, you probably know that he failed to win any of the three titles in contention. However, what would happen in the next 20 years following his departure would be much worse. Leverkusen haven't won a single trophy ever since, and perhaps even worse, they failed to get past the round of 16 in the Champions League in their subsequent 8 attempts. Bayern will continue to produce several exciting youngsters, but they are yet to find a leader like Balak. Number 8. Robin van Persie at Arsenal It's safe to say that Arsenal is doing much better nowadays than their Arteta's leadership. They have a solid team that blows every Arsenal squad from the last ticket out of the park. Nonetheless, 10 years after his departure, no striker has done as much for the Gunners as Van Persie did, and the striker position is still a concern for Arteta in 2023. Despite Giroud and Aubameyang being decent in their respective tenures at the club, none of them show the ability to inspire the team to victory like Van Persie did. We're talking about a guy who played alongside the likes of Alex Song, Flamini and Lord Bentner, and still qualify them to Champions League football. Truly a remarkable player that would fit in like a glove in current day Arsenal. Number 7. Ricardo Pereira at FC Porto This point might seem like an odd inclusion for many of you watching. After all, in the past couple of seasons, Ricardo has shown very little due to his frequent injuries. But his story in FC Porto is indeed a remarkable one. In 2017, Ricardo was on the back of two consecutive loans and was seen as an expendable player for the club. But with the arrival of Sergio Conceição and the lack of other alternatives for the right-back position, he transitioned from a winger into a full-back and proceeded to have the most outstanding season in his career, being fulcral to Porto's first title conquest in five years. After that incredible season, the club sold him in order to make a profit and save themselves from bankruptcy. But what they didn't know is that five years after his departure, they would still be looking for an effective replacement. I lost count of how many right-backs Porto bought and how many midfielders and wingers they adapted into that position, but one thing is certain, they are yet to find someone as good as Ricardo. Number 6. Sir Alex Ferguson at Manchester United Quite the obvious choice, but I simply couldn't leave Sir Alex out. This man turned Man United from an average side into one of the best clubs in the world, winning the Champions League twice and the league 13 times. He also primed an entire class of youngsters into world-class players and had a significant role in the development of one of the best players of all time. But as soon as he left the club, Manchester United crumbled and are yet to truly make a triumphant return to both Premier League and Champions League glory. Van Gaal, Mourinho, Ten Hag are just some of the names that have recently failed in their attempts to reignite the winning spirit at Old Trafford, which proves without a shadow of a doubt that Sir Alex's legacy will most likely never be matched. Number 5. George Aghi for Romania This man wasn't called the King or Maradona of the Carpathians for no reason. Aghi was a remarkable player and despite having disappointing stints with both Real and Barca, he became a cult hero with Galatasaray. However, it's his legacy with the Romanian national team that seems impossible to replicate. Before he became an international, Romania hadn't qualified to a World Cup in 20 years, but fueled by his remarkable dribbling and rebel personality, the Romanians qualified to three consecutive World Cups, reaching the round of 16 in 1990 and 1998 and the quarter-final stage in 1994. Following his international retirement, not only have the Romanians failed to produce another player of his caliber, but they also failed to qualify to any World Cup ever since. Number 4. Roman Abramovich at Chelsea 
Many people during the 2000s and even during the last decade have said that Chelsea's success was simply due to having money and not necessarily due to Abramovich leadership qualities. Well, now that the Blues are spending more than ever and reaping mediocre results, it became pretty evident that there was in fact a lot of pondering and thinking behind most signings, compared to nowadays where I've lost count how many rebuilds the club has done in just two years. Under Bully's ownership, the club appears to be betting it all on unproven youngsters to guarantee that the future is blue, but that attitude in the market has cost them a lot of points, since it's obvious the team lacks the mental toughness to turn things around. And in the vast majority of times, that only comes with experience. Time might prove me wrong, and Chelsea could have one of the greatest comeback stories in recent memory, but so far, Todd Bully's leadership has been disastrous no matter how much money pours into the club. Number 3. Neymar at Santos Pelé's throne in Santos was empty for 34 years, until a little boy from Ojidas Cruz rose up to the challenge and finally cemented himself as a fish's next star. Although he didn't have the tenure nearly as long or as impactful as Pele, Neymar was able to elevate Santos into one of the most exciting sides not only in South America but also in the world. He made everyone around him look like world-class players and in the process helped Santos conquer the Libertadores, the Recopa Sudamericana and the Brazilian Cup. However, after his controversial move to Barcelona, Santos were definitely the losing side in that deal, failing to adequately replace him or to replicate the success that they had with their prodigy star. To make it worse, in the past couple of seasons the club has even come close to getting relegated, which if it happens, will culminate one of the most significant downfalls in football history. Number 2. Jean-Michel Lolas at Lyon This man took over Lyon when they were in the depths of France's second division in 1987 and just 14 years later the club began their most dominating period, conquering 7 Ligue 1 titles in a row. It was also during Ola's leadership that Lyon became a serious contender in Europe, having reached the UCL semi-finals in two different occasions. He was the best president in French football history, but just like any other man, he wasn't immune to the passage of time and in the last years in charge, his leadership became obsolete, leading the new owner John Texer to remove him from the president role in the end of the past season. However, things couldn't have gotten to a worse start under the new leadership and Lyon find themselves in a relegation spot, having received little investment to improve their team in his last transfer market. It really looks like Lyon will no longer be more than just a feeding club and at Ola's winning mentality left with him. And finally at number 1, Messi and Ronaldo win La Liga. Despite their outstanding talents, I don't see either Messi or Ronaldo as irreplaceable at Barca or Real Madrid from a sporting point of view. Barcelona was already doing poorly with Messi in the squad in his last two seasons and Real Madrid has continued to succeed even without Ronaldo with the likes of Benzema, Modric and more recently Bellingham stepping up to that clutch player role. However, La Liga as a whole fell off massively and lost millions of viewers with Ronaldo's departure alone and it only got worse when Messi left in 2021. You see, back in the 2010s, many top players would join sides like Atletico, Valencia and Sevilla to play against the two GOATs and as a consequence, Spanish sides dominated both European competitions for a significant period. Not only that, but the El Clasico reached completely new heights with millions and millions of fans tuning in to watch that match as if it was a Champions League final, while nowadays, the interest is nowhere near the same level. Tebas' restrictions on how much the clubs can spend have done little to help, but ultimately, both Ronaldo and Messi's departure were the main reasons behind the lost interest in the league. But what do you think? Will La Liga bounce back? Or will it end up like Serie A? If you've made it this far, leave your own opinion in the comments and let's start the discussion. Like the video if you want to watch more content like this, and subscribe to Throne FC so you never miss the most interesting football discussions, stories and top 10 lists. Thank you for watching until the end. I appreciate you and I will see you soon.